Hey, good morning once again. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, everyone can hear me okay? Uh, right, uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, so I request any one of us to please lead us in prayer. Uh, Mangi, uh, can you please lead us in prayer? Thank you, sir. Let's pray. Holy Father, we thank you for the new week you've given us, and we thank you for this opportunity to learn again. And as we learn about our marketplace ministry, we pray for that you'll open our hearts to receive and to let your Holy Spirit expand on what we are learning, Lord, so that we we are effective both in, 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 in our work with you and also in our interaction with people. We pray all this in the mighty name of Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mangi. All right. Uh, before we get into today's class, uh, let's just do a quick review of what we did last week. Uh, last week, we completed uh, chapter two, looked at how even as we are in the workplace, we can expect unusual favor. So we saw the example of Daniel and Joseph. And we also learned that, uh, you know, we need to build in a certain place, which means you know, don't keep moving around, but settle down, right? Uh, take a review, revise and refine the work uh, that we are doing. And then we also looked at a very important point, which is avoid the donkey and the horse syndrome. Uh, the donkey is too slow to move ahead, and the horse is always going ahead uh, without any guidance. So avoid that syndrome. Uh, wait on the Lord. Uh, wait for his direction. Wait for his leading. And remember that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So the Lord will order our steps. And then we also looked at how, uh, you know, with these principles, God is calling us to step into the mountain uh, which we which is ahead of us which means whatever god is uh, you know has for us whether it is ministry whether it is government religion media arts and entertainment whatever field that god has called us for uh, we are to grow in the gifts and the grace that uh, god has blessed us with all right so let's move into chapter 3 chapter 3 is uh, deals with our personal lives, right? Uh, it's the chapter three is right workplace attitudes. Uh, now, attitude is a way of looking at things, right? Our choices, our actions, our behaviors, our habits. That's our attitude, right? Uh, our attitude will also determine our character, and it goes both ways, right? So, here's the thing to remember: not all work environments are the same right so for example uh, you may be working in one company and people may be very good to you you know there's a friendly atmosphere everyone are you know helping each other out and that's wonderful but all of a sudden for example you get a promotion and you move to a new company now the lifestyle or the the a sense of that company, the people may be very rude. They don't really help each other. Everyone are, uh, it's like a rat race. Everyone want to be the best in what they are doing. And, uh, you know, there's politics, there's jealousy. Now, all of a sudden, you see a change. But our attitude is one thing that should not change, right? Uh, we need to develop this and maintain this attitude of, of right attitude, good attitude, godly attitude, uh, regardless of our situations around. Right? We can maintain a good attitude when things, when people are good, office, workplaces, has a good atmosphere. But what about when the atmosphere is not so good uh, in the workplace? Attitude is a choice. Uh, it's how we decide to look at things. Right? So if we look at things and say, okay, this is a very bad company. I don't want to work here. 
obviously when you know when we go to work we'll feel oh man i don't want to work here the people are not good right or you know uh, uh, these are the things that happen to me and so having the right workplace attitude will always contribute not only to your personal life but also to the organization right now just because some of us may be in ministry uh, doesn't mean this does not apply to us it very much applies to us right now we see that a lot of churches ministries are gaining structure they have offices they have leadership they have uh, you know work hours in place uh, and they have a monday to friday work uh, you know office and so all of this what we are talking about does not only apply for the marketplace but it also applies for the, us in ministry right uh, you may be somebody who's started your own ministry and you know you don't really work for somebody but these attitudes uh, will help us to build uh, you know the the essence of what your ministry is about right so we're going to look at a, a couple of points uh, on how attitude will help us in our ministry or in the workplace right so i'm on page 30 in the book uh, chapter 3 right Play, workplace attitude on the point your attitude almost always determines your altitude that's wonderful your attitude determines your altitude meaning how high you go if you've got an attitude of you know i just don't mind being in the same place uh then we will remain there let's look at daniel chapter 6 and verse 3 yes could one of us please read daniel chapter 6 and verse 3 i could read daniel 6 3 then this daniel distinguished himself above the governors and the satraps because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to setting him over the whole realm. Wonderful. Thank you, Samuel. So what do we see here? Let me give you a little bit of a background. The Babylonians come, they take captive uh, uh, Daniel and a few of his friends. And Daniel is a young man. He's there in Babylon. Uh, and what happened? What does it say here? Daniel had an excellent spirit in him. And, uh, now, Daniel was uh, in the government for three empires, the Babylonians, then the Medes come in, and the Persians, uh, Darius. Right? So for three government, three world empires, he was governing Babylon. Now, why was that so? Because he has an excellent spirit in him. And not only that, the Persian king, Darius, said, I'm going to make you, Daniel, I heard about you, uh, from the Babylonians, I've heard about your work and how uh, the work that you did as uh, as governor of this, uh, you know, of Babylon and all that you did to this place. I heard about it. So you will be the leader over everything, over all the provinces. Now, while his enemies were trying to bring him down, the en his, you know, his he had a lot of enemies. They tried all they can to bring him down. But the Bible says this wonderful thing. They could not find anything wrong in Daniel's work. He was perfect. There was an excellent spirit in him. In the same job or in the same office, we can say, uh, the people were against Daniel. But the leader, the king said, hey, Daniel, I'm going to make you ruler of everything. On one side, uh, they wanted to pull him down. On the other side, the king is saying, I'm going to make you a leader. Uh, so our grace, our gifts and skills that we bring to the workplace and our attitudes set us apart. Right? If our attitude is right, if our attitude is that of a positive attitude, uh, we get recognition from leaders, we get recognition from people. We get recognition. God will begin to open doors for us. Uh, and, and it's a wonderful thing to have a positive attitude. Right? Now, even in ministry, 
uh, you know, I've, I've met a lot of young people, you know, they tell me, uh, you know, I joined Bible college or I joined this course, but uh, I stopped studying in between. I said, what happened? Uh, I said, no, I, I felt that it was too much to study. And, uh, you know, as they talk, we get to know the attitude that they have towards, you know, the, <clears throat> the studies they've taken up. Sometimes we have students here who have taken up MBBS. They were you know, studying to be a doctor. Uh, there are different kinds of students here uh, that we meet. Some students say, oh, it is so difficult. And, uh, you know, uh, of course it is difficult, but uh, we can make out the attitude in which they talk. And then there are other students who said, I'm enjoying pastor. I, I like what I'm doing, uh, even though it's difficult. This is what I wanted to do. And it's so wonderful to see that positive attitude. And what happens? Our attitude will determine our altitude. Daniel was, you know, tried, was, was being set up by his co colleagues, saying, okay, we'll catch this guy. How do we catch him? Through Only through God. And so they tried to set him up, but even that didn't work. When he knew that uh, he's going to be thrown into the lion's den, he knew it. If he prays to another god, he'll be thrown into the lion's den. That did not change his attitude towards the situation. We don't read about Daniel going back and you know crying and fasting and praying. No. The Bible says he opened the windows, you look towards Jerusalem, and as usual, he prayed to God. So his attitude to the whole thing didn't, didn't change at all. So even when we are faced, or we may be thrown into the lion's den, so to speak, people attacking us from all the sides, let not our attitude change. Let's re remain, uh, let's uh, you know, keep that positive attitude, knowing that God is on our side. As long as we have done the right thing, as long as we have obeyed God, obeyed our leaders, We've done the right thing. God is with us, right? Two, do all for the glory of God. First Corinthians ten thirty one. Let's read. First Corinthians chapter ten and verse thirty one. Yes, any one of us? I do. Yes, go ahead, Christopher. Uh, one Corinthians ten thirty one. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. Thank you, Christopher. So Paul is writing here to the Corinthians and he's saying, whatever you do, whether you eat, drink, work, sleep, play, whatever it is, do it for the glory of God. So basically what Paul is saying is, let your motivation to do things be right. Right? We are motivated. Our motivation is what drives us. Right? Uh, we are motivated, like each one of us here. Uh, you are motivated to join the Bible college. Right? Uh, that, that's a motivation. It's something that drives you towards it. Right? Uh, and then our motivation inspires us. It stimulates us. It helps us to keep going. Right? Uh, now, there are different reasons for people to be motivated. Right now, if you look at companies, uh, and especially now with the IT uh, companies that are just you know growing so big, different companies have different incentives. We would say, you know, some companies may say, "I'll give you and your family medical benefits. Any problem, everything will be cashless. You can go. You can have all the medical help that you need." Some companies provide. You know, uh, uh, financial aid, some companies bonuses, some provide, uh, you know, uh, uh, money for, you know, uh, home expenses. Or there are also some companies who provide for educational loans. And so all kinds of companies have different uh, incentives that they provide, which is wonderful. But our motivation to work, our motivation to do any kind of work, whether it's in the marketplace or ministry, should be to give glory to God. Right. So even as uh, maybe some of us are already in the ministry or you're planning to join the ministry, what is your motivation? Right. Uh, 
is the motivation uh, you know just so that you know we can stand in front of the church and preach in front of people and gain recognition now that would be the wrong motivation or is the motivation god i want to bring glory to your name i want to you to impact many lives through me use me as a channel of your blessing now that would be the right motivation right the more we are motivated the more we will be able to do something for god but uh, i remember this uh, you know just 2021 in december uh, we were talking to uh, the you know every christmas season we have carols in the malls and uh, this year you know with all the persecution and things that are happening the anti conversion bill so many of them said you know uh, they came up to me and they said don't do this you know it's going to be a big trouble it's going to be a big problem people will stop you you may get into trouble and i thought about it and i kept it aside i said yes it's it's not the right time to do carols and uh, one day i was just sitting and reading the word of god and this whole verse came up to me and it says I'm not giving you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. And I thought to myself, God, I'm doing whatever I want to do. I want to give glory to your name. So it's not about me, whether you know it's APC or whether this church or that church. It's about the opportunity that God gives us and the opportunity to take it and give glory to God. So I called up the malls and I said, you know, we'll come and do the carols. Can you give us dates? They were happy. They gave us dates. And we just did it, right? We did the carols in all the malls. And praise God for protection. Nothing really happened. But here's what happened after that. I kept telling the team as we were, you know, uh, moving to different carols and different malls. It, it was on different dates. But I kept telling the team this. As you are doing this, remember, you're giving glory to God. Right? It's not about our gifts and talents. Give glory to God. Thank God for the opportunity. And so we did all the carols. And then in one of the malls, the organizers came up to us and said, uh, it was very nice. The carols was very good. Uh, and so our senior managers uh, are thinking about 2022 as well. Is it okay if you can go to Hyderabad, go to Mumbai? And uh, you know there was another city he mentioned, Hyderabad and Mumbai. Uh, and he was open to you know, doing the carols in all these places for us. So I thought to myself, to the smalls, what if we hadn't, you know, gone there and uh, done this whole carols, but God was faithful, right? So uh, what I'm trying to say is, whatever we do, when we give glory to God, God will open many more doors for us. Right? Maybe it's in the workplace, you're working, you know, the whole six, seven hours in front of the laptop, working on assignments or working on targets that has to be achieved. It could be strenuous, but here's the thing. We say, God, I thank you for this job. I thank you that uh, as I'm doing this, I'm giving glory to you. God will begin to bless the work of our hands, right? So let's remain to have that attitude, Lord, it's not me. It's all about you and what you have done for me. Third point, keep your ambition kingdom focused. Let's read Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Matthew 6, 33. Let's go ahead. Ma Anybody? Matthew, Matthew 6. 6. Matthew 6, 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things should be added to you amen thank you mangi now this is a verse that all of us have probably quoted uh in our sermons or even as we speak to people seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness all the other things shall be added unto you so what is uh, matthew trying to focus here he's saying first things first put God first in everything that we do. Right? Seek first the kingdom of God. And all the other things concerning our work, concerning our families, our apart from work, 
whatever needs to be you know done god will make it come to pass right how do so maybe some of us may ask a question uh, you know i'm working in the it company monday to friday or monday to even saturday how can i seek first the kingdom of god in my company i've got all numbers i've got these targets i've got people around me some are good some are bad and the environment in this place is this way how can i seek first the kingdom of god here's how we do it god is calling us whether in the marketplace or whether in the ministry to seek his righteousness which means seek to do what is right in god's kingdom our focus even it it may be something in you know completely out of ministry right you may feel that this is not something god is interested in but no god is interested in it when we focus ourselves and say god i'm putting you first i want to know that what i'm doing in my work is it pleasing in your sight and when we think of that and avoid the distractions that are there around us we will be able to you know give god the glory we will be able to seek the kingdom of god first let me give you this example of uh i think most of us have heard of this uh you know uh, singer named elvis presley you know growing up he wanted to be a gospel singer he loves the lord he grew up in a very christian uh environment and growing up he would you know always sing hymns he would be at church singing but he always kept telling his brother i want to do something for the church i want to do something uh, so he writes in his biography that you know he always wanted to do something in the ministry he felt that god had called him towards the ministry and he always had that ambition but what happened was at a young age he tasted uh you know success he tasted freedom he tasted uh you know wealth and uh, all the things of this world that pulled him away uh from being kingdom minded you know uh, his brother wrote in this article uh, saying that there would be millions of people around the world waiting to see him and waiting to talk to him and meet him but after every concert he will go back to his room and he will sit on the piano and he will play how great thou art with tears streaming down his eyes and i would look at my brother and i would think why is he crying when the whole world wants to be like him and he's got all the wealth he's got all the money he's got everything that he his heart desires but he sits and he plays how great thou art on the piano and he cries why later on his brother realized that that was not he knew that what he was doing was not kingdom focus he knew that it was not something that was giving glory to god somewhere deep in his heart he knew it and so here's the thing even as we focus on our dreams our goals uh pursuits for what god wants us to do remember that it should be kingdom focused i'm not saying that we are not to make money not to build a house not to buy a car that's all important that's required but the focus is god i want you to be glorified in in my work i want you to glorified to be glorified in everything that i do so that is the focus right uh, let's go to the next point uh, if if in if you have any questions any thoughts feel free to unmute and you can uh, uh, and just share your thoughts and questions right next point always remember there is more to life than just making money let's read proverbs 11 verse 28 proverbs 11:28 yes anyone proverbs 11 verse 28 proverbs 11 28 he who trust in his riches will fall but the righteous will flourish like foliage amen thank you mangi so this is i think one of the most basic things that we must remember as believers 
money wealth and riches is not everything in life right uh, our pursuit in life is only not about you know earning more money you know buying another house buying another house buying cars that's that's not the pursuit that we must have in life right there are more things than money right sometimes we wait to go up the corporate ladder we want to go up we want to go up and the focus is money uh now it's not wrong to go to, you know to pursue to go up the uh, corporate ladder but if only money is in our mind remember that god is your master and money is your slave right luke chapter 16 verse 13 jesus writes jesus says this so beautifully no servant can be the slave of two masters such a slave will hate one and love the other or be loyal to one and despise the other you cannot serve both god and money and so we must be careful uh you know there are certain intangibles in life meaningful relationships serving people uh, solving problems fulfilling god's purpose in our life these are things that are intangible so this is worth more than money right so we don't take the extremes of both sides we don't say okay uh, i work only for money and have only money in the mind and then there's this other side who says no i i don't need any money right so that again would be wrong so we need to balance ourselves right so we've seen sometimes uh, these over super spiritual uh, people say i don't need money god will provide for my needs now uh we need money it's a resource that god has blessed us with but uh our trust and our hope should not only be on money let me give you this uh, wonderful example uh, that uh, i read many years back and it's still with me uh there's this tennis player I, i think i've used this example the tennis player named andre agassi was a five time wimbledon champion as a young boy you know all he wanted to do was play tennis he's about 5 6 years old so he was willing to get up in the early mornings go for trainings and his mind was focused on winning the wimbledon from 6 years old so that's all he wanted to do so all these you know there were birthday parties there were uh, family trips he would miss all of that right because he said no 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 one day uh, you know i want to be the wimbledon champion and i want to uh, you know uh, achieve these things i want to uh, achieve uh, get a lot of money as well and become famous and become rich through this and so he worked really hard right and finally at a very young age he won the wimbledon uh, uh in his early 20s he won the wimbledon and he came back home that night from the wimbledon uh, and he put he put the trophy on his you know maybe his rack and in his biography he writes that when he looked at that trophy and he looked at the money that he had won and made through this whole wimbledon he said he felt empty it was then when he started feeling suicidal tendencies he said all my life i've been working towards winning this wimbledon champion and wanting to become rich now that i've won it i see the trophy here i see the money that i have but all of this makes me still feel empty and then he went through depression he he went through suicidal tendencies he had to go through counseling medication so much what 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 are we trying to say that money is not everything in life fame is not everything in life when we put the lord jesus at the center and then when we receive the blessings of god then you will see you know whatever little or whatever the god has blessed us with it will be sufficient now proverbs writes many verses where we say that you know it is like the rich people it's like putting money into a purse which has holes in it and all of a sudden we realize hey i have been earning the whole month and i've got my pay and where is all the money gone it's gone into a hole into a pocket with holes in it right and so life is not only about money 
uh, uh, if making money becomes the sole motivator, another important thing is we may end up in sin. We may start taking bribes, crooked means, violating rules, uh, you know, cheating people for money, even hurting people for money. And I think one of the most, uh, you know, one very sad to say this, but there are places where people say, you give me so much money, I will prophesy on you. You give me so much money and I will, you know, heal you. And so prophecies are going for sale. Healings are going on sale. And why is that? Why is all this happening in the ministry? Because of the love of money. So we should avoid it. God is your master. Money is your slave. Remember that God can create things into being for you. right? So always, always remember that. Uh, in ministry, in the corporate field as well, remember that God is your master. Money is your slave. Right? So you decide how money, uh, how to treat money and not the other way around. All right, next point. Everyone okay? Everyone with me? Uh, am I too fast? Shall we move on to the next point? Any thoughts? Any questions? Okay. All right, let's go to the next point. Always walk in the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 15, 16. Let's read. One of us, please read. Proverbs 15, 16. Um, Proverbs 15, 16. Better is a little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure with the trouble. Amen. Thank you, Abinas. Right. Better is little with the fear of the Lord. Now, we all know this is not talking about uh, of, of fear as in how we get fear for things around us. But no, to walk in the fear of the Lord is to walk in reverence and honor of our God. So it means to be always conscious that what I'm doing, is it pleasing in the sight of God? Is it, is it in line with what God wants me to do? Am I conscious that, am I in every aspect, am I walking in reverence? Am I walking in the fear of the Lord? So for example, we can ask ourselves this question. Does, does this honor God? Does this demonstrate reverence to God? Is it right in the eyes of God? Right. Uh, you know, uh, I remember this when I was um, in Bible college. Uh, you know, we used to meet in the class. We had first year and second year. Uh, it was a DTH course. And I remember, you know, sometimes there would be, uh, you know, people would, you know, scratch the tables or, you know, the chairs would be damaged. And I would feel really bad. I would tell the students, you know, I was a junior, but I would tell the students, why are we doing this? We need to respect what, what we have, you know. Me and a few of my friends say, we should not do this. We should, is it honoring God? Is it, the, is it something that, you know, God is pleased with? And, and here's the thing. It's only chairs and tables, right? It has nothing to do with ministry or, uh, but here's the thing. When we have the fear of the Lord, even the smallest things that we do will, you know, will question us. Is it something that is right in the sight of God? Right. I also remember, uh, you know, there was this young man in my class, uh, and he was he was from a rural place of India, and um, so he had joined our Bible college, and uh, young man, right early 20s but he found english very difficult very difficult right so he would uh, he would sit next to me in class and uh, you know he wouldn't understand anything so he'd say paul i i don't understand anything i said i used to tell him you know, don't worry as you, you know, pick up as the weeks go by you'll pick up you'll do well uh, but he had never spoken english he's never heard english he was part from the rural villages of india 
but it was too difficult. You know, the first semester he did quite badly in all his subjects and they said, okay, you know, uh, this is not how we can do it. We, you know, you have to improve your grades and all of it. And he tried his best. Right. But one thing he's, he, he, you know, we had certain rules. Uh, you, we got to wake up at 5 a.m. for prayer. Uh, there was the afternoon prayer. There was the night prayer, the 21 days of fasting prayer and the five days of prayer for all these places. He would wake up, you know, he would be on time. He would wake up exactly before four, four five o'clock, 5 a.m. for 45. All the students will be asleep. And he would wake up and he would, you know, get freshened up five o'clock. Exactly. He will start beginning to pray. Right. Nobody's there to tell, you know, to tell you, OK, you have to get up and pray. It's your own personal thing. And then in the fasting prayers, he's there fasting and praying. And one thing that I saw was and I told him, see, you're finding the studies hard. But I, what I see in you is you have the fear of the Lord in you. And the Bible teaches that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Right? And, and so I told him, I used to tell him, you know, you can do this. Don't worry. You know, he graduated from our Bible college, learning two instruments and with grade A in all his subjects. He graduated. How? Because he had the fear of the Lord in him. Initially, it was, you know, there were, it was too difficult for him. But when the fear of the Lord is in us, it gives us the wisdom to do well. God really blessed him. Now he's in full-time ministry. He's pastoring a church. Right? So it's wonderful when, you know, it's not only about being, having fear of the Lord when exams are around. No. It's even when every aspect of our life is regarding family. Uh, am I doing the right thing for my family? Am I doing the right thing for my children? Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If we want to grow in wisdom, if we want to grow in, uh, in the way we minister, the way we are at work, uh, and we are praying, God, grant me wisdom, remember the fear of the Lord will help us gain that wisdom right proverbs 22 4 says by humility and f the fear of the lord are riches and honor and life when we have fear of the lord riches and honor and life is ours so let's remember that even as we are preparing ourselves for the ministry or even in the workplace, let's remember to have the fear of the Lord in us. Walk in reverence. If somebody tells you, you know, can you make this file? Can you just add something? Just do this and send it to, send it to me. What is our response? You can say, no. Does this honor God? Let's not. So then say, no. Let's do it the right way. Right? Or there will be people who are cheating and, you know, for promotion or whatever. Uh, but our way is to do things in the right way that is honoring and pleasing to God. Right? Let's go to the next point. The fruit of the Spirit are winning attitudes, and we are to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. Right? So let's read Galatians chapter 5, 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. Yes, go ahead, anyone. Galatians but 5. Spirit... Yeah. Go ahead, Anita, sister. Yeah, thank you. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self control. There is no law against such things as this. Amen. Thank you, Anita. But the Spirit produces. I'm sure we all know the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Some versions say gentleness. Uh, the good news version says humility and self-control. Right? Now, the presence and work of the Holy Spirit 
will work in us as uh, as we work in our office, in our in whatever work that God has given us, we can ask the fruit of the Holy Spirit to manifest because they are winning attitudes. They are attitudes that will help us uh, in our workplace. Right now, imagine you know that everyone are uh, angry with each other. Imagine this atmosphere in an office. You know, everyone are angry with each other. There's no peace. But you walk into your office every day and you're not angry, but you're at peace, you're laughing, you're joyful, you have, you know, you're walking in humility. And then people ask you, hey, you know, all the bad things are happening to us and our team. Why, why is it that you are not upset? So one of the things that we can say is I'm not upset because I'm led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit the fruit of the Holy Spirit in me. Now, the key word here, it's not fruits. It's fruit. Right? These are different essence of one fruit. The fruit, meaning, like, for example, if it's an apple, the apple has love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So it's all in one. So we can say, Holy Spirit, even as I go to work, you know, the, the place, the work, the atmosphere at the workplace is bad. People are fighting, mocking each other, jealous of each other, and there's no uh, kind of order. But Lord, I know that you have given me the fruit of the Spirit. And I will walk in love. I will walk in joy. I will walk in peace. Walking in patience and kindness and gentleness. Right? What happens? People will notice our character. People will notice our attitudes. And everything will change. Even as we consider these nine traits, let's look at them one by one. What, what do they really mean? You know, we may be able to say it, but how can I apply these nine traits uh, in my life, applied in my family and in the workplace or even in the ministry? Let's look at these nine gifts. First one, love, demonstrating compassion, care, concern for people. And we may think, how can I demonstrate compassion to my boss when he's you know, always putting me down? Or he's not giving me any opportunity and everyone else are getting the best and I'm getting nothing. Remember that the Lord Jesus said, love your enemies. Is it easy? No. Very hard. That is the fruit of the Spirit. We need to demonstrate compassion and love. Two, joy. Positive, happy, passionate enthusiasm, exuberance about life. So imagine everyone are walking into office. And they're sleepy, groggy, irritated of what is going to happen in the day. Oh, we have three meetings. Meetings are going to go on for two hours. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. So you can say, God, it's going to be a tiring day. It's a long day ahead of us. But the joy of the Lord will be my strength. Help me to be positive. Help me to be passionate about the work that I have. Then you got peace. A sense of calmness, composure, and serenity. I like that word, composure. You know, in the midst of the storm, you can be at peace at what God has given you. Sometimes, maybe in, in even this happens even in ministry where you know we may feel restless about the things that are happening, may get tiresome, may get weary. Even in the workplace, we may think, Oh, I've got to hit 10 hours or 15 hours sometimes, got to work on the weekdays. Uh, we may feel stressed out. It's a natural thing. But God, the Holy Spirit, gives us peace where we can, even in those stressful days and stressful moments, we can keep our composure and say, God, I know you are my peace. You are the peace that passeth all understanding. Help me to trust in that peace. Then we have patience, firm endurance, commitment, 
willing to stick with things. Patience is something that we all really need. You know, in the workplace, even in ministry, sometimes we are all in a hurry to, you know, to become, uh, to earn money and or to go up the ladder. Uh, and sometimes it's by hook or by crook, or sometimes by hook and by crook. Uh, but here's the thing. God is calling us to be patient. All through the scriptures we read that when God chooses people, no matter what, whether it's in the ministry, whether it's in the workplace, God always trains people before he uses them. Most often he does that. And we did look at this last semester as well. You know, He trained Moses in the desert. He trained Paul for 17 years. He trained uh, you know, uh, uh, Joseph for another 17 years. David was trained for 17 years. They were all given wonderful prophetic words and they had a great future ahead of them. But God made them wait. Patience is important. So we are not, you know, in a place where we say, no, I want this fast, I want this fast. By next year, I should be... The... Hey, it's good to plan out. Uh, but if God is asking us to be patient, let's be patient. Kindness, gentleness in word and deed. When we are kind to others, uh, it just reciprocates. Right? Uh, I'm sure some of us may, I've gone through this, you know, you're going on the, in the traffic and then maybe somewhere we did something wrong, right? Uh, and what happens you know, you know, oh, I did this wrong. I shouldn't have taken this turn. And the other person uh, opposite gets upset. What happens if you give them a smile? 10 out of 10 times, they're not going to shout. They'll just smile back. Or what happens when, you know, you're going on the traffic and somebody else makes a mistake and you're on the receiving end. And what happens when they smile? Very unlikely we'll say, oh, what are you laughing at? We will not say that, right? That smile will change everything of that situation. You say, okay, it's all right, go go ahead. I'm sure it's happened to us. Kindness is word and deed shown to the other person. Goodness is uh, demonstrating generosity. Faithfulness, being sincere, being dependable, having uh, and loyal to your commitments. Very important. Right? If you make certain commitments uh, to people, be loyal to it. Try to keep your commitments. Right? Humility, uh, meekness. Right? No matter how big we grow, no matter how high we go up that ladder, or no matter how much we know uh, around us, walk in humility. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Finally, self-control, self-governing ability, uh, able to you know, control our thoughts, our words, our actions. Right? Many a times, uh, you know, I've seen some of my, you know, when I was working in the IT companies, I've seen some of my team members, they would say, you know, how can he do this? No, they don't have self-control. Then they go and they shout at the team leader, the team leader receives it, but later on he gets a warning letter. They say, oh. And then it happens again, they get a termination letter. And that's what happened to one of my friends, a, a person in my team. He got upset, he shouted, he got a warning letter. Then he, a couple of months later, he did the same thing. And then they just called him aside during one break time, called him, took him to the conference room. They said, Today's your last day. Please sign your termination letter. And he was in shock. He, 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 I remember he was telling me, I've got a loan. I'm the only one working. Oh, I'm so sorry. But they did not listen. I thought to myself, it's so important to have self-control. Learn how to direct our energies wisely. Yes, I'm not saying we don't get upset. We get upset. But when you're, uh, you know, Proverbs says some wonderful principles that we can use and we're upset just keep quiet just keep quiet let 
let the situation you know let your mind become cool and then you can make the right decisions as the bible say in your anger do not sin right so there be the worst time to make decisions is when you're angry so imagine that each one of us can walk in these in this fruit of the spirit all nine aspects love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self control and even as we do that these are winning attitudes the holy spirit will empower us uh, for greater things in the workplace in the ministry so let's stop here uh, we'll pick up from the next point tomorrow uh, and we will look to please finishing uh, most of this chapter tomorrow itself all right any questions any thoughts shall we close in prayer okay let's close in prayer uh, can any of us any one of us abinas can you close in prayer for us please uh, yes pastor okay let's pray dear heavenly father we thank you for this beautiful time and the moment that you have given us to learning father god your word lord jesus thank you father god father god for excellent teachers father god that you have provided father god to keep ourselves father god and equip ourselves lord jesus father god we pray that lord jesus we give us you give us the most strength and wisdom and the knowledge to understand your secret things father god in our life so that we can apply in our ministries in our workplace father god we pray for everything lord jesus we submit all of students and the teachers into your mighty hand father god we give our give you all the glory and honor to you lord and we ask this pray in jesus mighty name Amen. 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 Thank you everyone. Thank you for joining. Have a great day ahead. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Thank you pastor. God bless you too.